Hey, welcome to yet another build video. In this installment, I focus on tackling how to mount the ball screw to the back of the gantry. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, let me show you what I mean. You'll notice that the ball screw, as illustrated by that poorly rendered threaded rod, extends from one end of the gantry to the uh, other end. It's joined to a motor that will turn it. The ball screw attaches to a bearing block, uh, one on each end, and then each of those bearing blocks are bolted to a custom plate that will be used to fix it to the gantry. Now, both of these custom plates are slightly different from one another, and you may notice that here. Let's take a closer look at the design of our first part, the BF20 bearing block support. The BF20 bearing block is designed to support the 25mm ball screw that I'll be using for my Y-axis. The block is secured using two 55mm M8 bolts, and the mounting plate has two 7mm holes that will then be tapped for the M8s. In addition, the mounting plate also has four uh, 8mm holes to support M8 bolts. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we start off with making our four M8 holes that are counterboard. And after that's done, we drill two uh, seven millimeter holes that will be tapped for M8s. And once our holes are complete, we can begin our parting operation. Now I always enjoy this initial cut because you get a nice clean cut off the top and uh, really helps to see some progress being made on this part. Now on this piece of aluminum, it was a scrap piece, so the top edge doesn't quite meet the length requirements that I needed, but that's okay. In the end, it was just cosmetic, so uh, it may not look pretty, but it certainly will function. And that pretty much wraps up this piece. It is done and ready to be installed. The BK20 bearing block is slightly different than its smaller cousin. It has four 55mm M8 bolts and additional supports with a locking nut to hold the ball screw in place. This block is designed to be nearest to the motor, hence the need to double the bolts. The mounting plate configuration has changed also. Not only are there four threaded holes, but the arrangement has changed, and this we'll talk about later on in the video. Now in this one, I actually did a little bit of a test and drilled a hole with a new program that I wrote. So moving forward, uh, I'm using a new program to create these holes uh, using some lessons that were had from uh, my previous video. Uh, I have to say thank you very much to the community for really contributing to uh, knowledge. Um, and I made some mistakes in my last video and uh, I really appreciate it again. Uh, ways that I can avoid those in the future and one of those ways is the way that this hole is being drilled. Uh, in previous practice what I would do is I would just basically plunge down into the hole and hope for the best. But instead I'm encouraged to, if I don't have a drill bit, instead to use a circular motion and uh, start with a smaller bit and uh, leave room so that way I can uh, properly escape out uh, any debris. So anyway, thanks again for the community for contributing to that knowledge. I am much more confident now when I'm drilling these holes. Okay, here we have the uh, completion of these two parts again. I uh, was able to drill through this one and uh, also get these 
holes threaded out. So that's all taken care of. So the next step is uh, more or less to assemble it. And that's a pretty simple process with these. This one just involves uh, two screws that are gonna be on the, uh, the actual mount here. Again, this is the uh, BF20. Uh, this is for the ball screw. Um, so these, this particular mounting plate, again, just has the two. Simple enough. Just drop these in. Um, what we're gonna do is, again, these are using uh, M8s, a little bit longer. Uh, pretty straightforward. You just drop in and we just lightly put these in for now. Kind of critical that we make sure this is tight. All right, that one's done. Next one is the BK20. Now this is gonna be directly uh, the, the side that's on the, the motor. So uh, hence why it's got four instead of just the two. Um, all right, so again, just dropping these in. Make sure that they're lined up. It's gonna be a loose fit for now. Okay, oops, can we get the kind of the corners here? All right, so there we have it. Uh, this is ready to mount. Okay, so you can see here from, from our view here, this is gonna be mounted on the end of the gantry, obviously. Um, but one interesting thing about this particular design is, and the reason why the uh, four bolts are offset and uh, why uh, the uh, bearing block is not in the center is because there's no mounting point here and this uh, really needs to be able to move over. So, um, so at this point I just offset it, you know, and it should be, should be stiff enough. This is a three quarter inch um, aluminum here. So that's, that's the goal anyway, that's the plan. So we're gonna just try to find our T-nut. Challenging when you got a big camera in the way kind of impedes development here. All right, there we go. Got one in. All right. All right, so the beauty of this is Again, it can, it can slide on the, on the rail here so we can make adjustments as needed. Um, and so if our length is a little off, we're, you know, as far as precision goes, we're, we should be pretty good. So anyway, I'm gonna get in the way of the camera and uh, try to find those other uh, T-nuts. All right, so I've got it lined up to where the other T-nuts are, should be pretty good, be able to find those anyway. There we are. Try to get this in there. Okay, we're almost done here. Uh, what you didn't see off camera was I was having a little bit of difficulty with one of the T-nuts. Uh, the uh, T-nut was actually, the threading was stripped on it. So anyway, we got that taken care of and I think we're good to go to move on to the next step. Okay, so there's kind of a big leap uh, forward as far as progress goes. Uh, in this particular frame here, you can see that the uh, ball screw is actually installed as well as the other bearing block. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture all that on camera because of the uh, camera angle, and it was a, bit, a little bit difficult to, to set it up, um, just me being the one installing it. So, uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to move on. There's uh, one more uh, step that we need to do, and it is to be able to install the motor, we need to modify uh, the motor mount on the, uh, the end cap on the other side. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna make some changes there, and then we're gonna install that. And I I will have video for that. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, end cap. We've got our motor mount, uh, the one on the right here. Right now, at the moment, there's nothing drilled into it on that motor mount side. 
So we need to mill in four five millimeter uh, holes. We're gonna uh, uh, tap those out to uh, six millimeters to support M6 bolts. And then we need to mill a 19 millimeter hole straight through and then uh, kind of make a dish two millimeter deep by 73 millimeters in diameter to support the motor itself. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of seat inside that, that ring there. So this week has been quite a milestone for this channel. We just passed 10,000 subscribers already. And that's, that's just truly amazing. I, I can't even believe it. So if you're not one of those uh, subscribers, please consider it. My goal is to deliver better and better content. Now, your comments mean the world to me and, and help me to improve my videos. And if you like what you see, hitting that thumbs up button, it, it really does let me know if I'm on the right track. So if you're passionate about this kind of stuff like I am, make sure to join our community by leaving a comment, hitting that like button, and subscribing to our channel. And, and again, thanks so much for your support. In my last assembly video, I asked our viewers to leave a comment using the word antiquity. I was not disappointed. Shout out to David Lewis for not only being the first comment, but the most creative. Congratulations! To make things even more confusing to our viewers, leave a comment and use the words bagel recipe. Let's see what happens. Best comment will be featured in an upcoming video. So now we're on to actually installing the motor onto the motor mount itself. Uh, you see that uh, we you know, were able to mill out this ring here. It's a two millimeter deep ring. Uh, I'm not sure, I think it's like 76 millimeters across. Whatever is the standard uh, for NEMA 34 stepper motors. This is a stepper servo, a hybrid. And uh, this motor here, again, we'll, uh, we'll install. It's got this, again, this ring right on it. It's an elevated ring that allows it to seat in there. So it kind of holds it in place. Um, We've already got the coupler uh, for the ball screw installed and it's secured to the ball screw itself. So at this point, we just install the, the motor and hope everything lines up. And it does, which is awesome. I can see uh, these six millimeter uh, bolts should line up into the, into the hole in theory. Just get one in place just so we can know that the motor is not going anywhere. First one's always a difficult one. Now I installed this one with the, the power and the uh, data lines pointing down and that's so it can go along the side of the gantry arm itself. In theory, if I need to, I'll, I'll rotate it to where, where appropriate, depending on if I get a cable management uh, system going here. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'm not t tightening these too much uh, in case I need to make changes, which, you know, you know how it goes. Sometimes you do. But so far, so good. relieved that everything lines up. Now the coupler does allow for a little bit of uh, room for error. Um, you know, not too much, but if you're off by a little bit, the coupler is designed to flex just a tad. So, okay, this one's a little tight, so I'm gonna back off some of these.
And if I'm wrong with any of this, <laughs> definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, I am just only, well, all I know is from research, not experience at all. So we'll see. Yeah, this one's tighter. I'm gonna switch over to, got a longer one here. All right, and then we got to tighten the coupler on the uh, the shaft itself. And I gotta might have to get in frame for this one, so might relocate the camera or not. Anyway, let's see. Get in frame here. All right, straight down. All right, we're tight. We're on. There you go, it's installed. And again, just leaving these cables down. All right, we did it. Now we plug it in, make sure it all works. I'm happy to say progress was made and I was able to accomplish a few tasks that I can duplicate for the x-axis. In fact, twice over since there will be two motors and two ball screws for the x-axis. I was worried about not being accurate with the motor mount and having to be forced into a situation where I'd have to think my way out. Well thankfully, that wasn't necessary. But there will be plenty of opportunities for me to screw something up and I suppose that's part of the learning process. Anyway, I'm excited to be able to move past this step and on to the next. Let me know in the comments what you think that next step should be. Plenty more to do. Stay tuned and thanks for watching all the way to the end.